Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to another episode of Guns N' Roses Central News Updates. And uh, I just want to first apologize to any Brazilian fans who watch my channel. I, I think last week I accidentally misspoke and said that uh, I don't know any Spanish when I'm referring to an article about Rock and Rio. And I should have said Portuguese. And then I know a couple people gave me shit for it in the comments. So I just wanted to set the record straight on that. I didn't mean to make that mistake. And I definitely will learn from that mistake. But let's get started with the news today. So we have some news about the opening app for Guns N' Roses in Europe. So we do know who's going to open for Guns N' Roses, at least at their show in Belgium. So uh, this got released online today. So The Pretenders, Wolf Mother, Channel Zero, and a band called Fleddy Melkily is going to be opening for Guns N' Roses. So Wolf Mother's been opening for Guns N' Roses uh, over the last year or so, and it seems like that's a band that Guns N' Roses really likes. Probably helps that Slash I had Andrew Stockdale on his solo album as well. Also a rumor going on on the MyGNR forums that uh, for Guns N' Roses show in Finland, uh, Michael Monroe of Hanoi Rocks uh, may be involved in the show, at least according to this interview, and it's in Finnish from what I can understand, so I'm just going by what they're saying on the forums, that he's emailed Slash about making an appearance at the show. So either I think maybe Mike Monroe will open up for Guns N' Roses, or he'll come on stage and play with them. And as you guys know, uh, Hanoi Rocks was a huge influence on Guns N' Roses. In fact, Guns N' Roses record label Uzi Suicide re-released or released uh, a lot of the Hanoi Rocks uh, albums on uh, their label back in the mid-90s, just to show you guys how big of fans Guns N' Roses were of Hanoi Rocks. And the song Ain't It Fun really was put on the spaghetti instant because... Um, Michael Monroe actually brought the song to Axel's attention and Axel enjoyed it so much. And also because ha Michael Monroe used to live with one of the members of the Dead Boys as well. Back in late 2015, uh, Mike Monroe was on Eddie Trunk's podcast and Monroe brought up the subject of a classic Guns N' Roses comeback while answering a question about the possibility of yet another Hanoi's Rocks run. And he basically said, reunions suck. People ask me, do you think Guns N' Roses will reunite? It wouldn't make any sense unless Slash and Axel would reconnect and really get into a new kind of thing and start creating something new. Who wants to see the guys put together forcibly and then go through the old stuff? It doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's an attitude that a lot of fans share, including myself. And then after Trunk pointed out to Monroe that many people would likely pay a lot of money to see such a reunion take place, the singer reconsidered his position, explaining, yeah, I take that back. Of course, everybody wants to see it because it's their idea of the band. And Monroe also added that a Guns N' Roses reunion wouldn't be the same unless one key ingredient was involved in the mix. He explained one thing we must not forget is that Steven Adler, the original drummer, must be included. The first album, Appetite for Destruction, there's a chemistry that is unlike anything they've done since. Because Steven Adler, he's maybe not technically as great as Matt Sorum, who's also brilliant, but he has a kind of vibe. He was pushing and he was playing a bit ahead of the beat. He had a style that was part of the chemistry to me, the sound of the original band. He was an integral part of that. He also revealed that he's still close personal friends with Slash and Duff and that he hasn't spoken to Axel in quite a while. And he also revealed in a 2004 interview that uh, at that time he hadn't spoken to Axel in a very long time. But he said, well, I was very friendly with him whenever we bumped into each other, but I haven't talked to him in a long time. He said back in 2004 he spoke to Slash regularly, and he's closer with Slash than he is with Axel. He did reveal the weird in event that happened between uh, Hanoi Rocks and Guns N' Roses. He said a weird thing happened when we played Japan a couple of years ago. Axel was headlining the show with the new Guns N' Roses, the hired Guns N' Roses. I never realized how much chemistry the original band had until I saw Axel with those hired guys. They were just sort of lost on stage. When Axel heard that Hanoi Rocks was playing the same festival that he was headlining, he got nervous and said he would not play on the same stage as us on the same day. I checked it out with many different sources and he thought the audience would react more to us than him. That was a great compliment and a good favor too because it leaked to the press that people were like, Hanoi Rocks must be really great if Guns N' Roses are shaking in their pants. I did get along with him and he was very nice to me. I didn't think that uh, we were that good of friends until he was nice enough to give us that kind of promotion. I watched him on the monitor on the second day of the show and the guitar player Buckethead was just so mediocre. So it seems like Mike Monroe has been kind of, you know, on one hand saying really good things about Axel and then saying not so good things about, you know, the new GNR, as some people would call it. And I also want to talk a bit about the fact that the Pretenders are opening for Guns N' Roses, which is kind of funny because I did a video a couple weeks ago about them. And there was a story revealed in an interview that uh, Stephen Aller did with Jay Moore on his podcast that uh, the Pretenders drummer, uh, Martin Chambers, was actually supposed to be his replacement uh, when Steven got kicked out. So apparently Martin Chambers rehearsed with Guns N' Roses or auditioned, and the guys in the band really liked him, and they actually offered him the job. And this is 
just rumors. This, I don't think this has been confirmed by any of them, but they offered him the job, but they said they sort of had an issue with his drum kit because if you guys have ever seen Martin Chambers' drum kit, it's got like this octopus kind of feel to it, and they just felt like it was too many drums, and they wanted him to scale down his drum kit. And I guess Martin Chambers wasn't having any of that and basically uh, told the guys where they could go, and uh, that's sort of how Matt Sorum was able to get the job. But I thought that was kind of funny. I kind of wonder if any of the story is going to be told on stage or something or in interviews around that time. But that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video today. And who do you think is going to open for Guns N' Roses in the city that you're, you guys are going to see them at? I did see some uh, talk on the GNR forums that Alter Bridge won't be probably likely be opening for Guns because they'll be touring at the same time and they'll be playing different venues. So let me know, guys. Uh, that does it for today's video. Please go follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to my social media icons are down below. As always, guys, leave your comments down below, and I'll be happy to respond to them. Take care.